Well, after months of speculation and controversy, the Alec Murdoch murder trial is starting today with jury selection. Throughout the trial, we will be providing expert legal analysis from a legal mind well known here in South Carolina and around the country, attorney Carl B. Grant, a trial lawyer who is joining us here today. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, Billy and I have been talking about the circumstances of this case. It is such a high profile case. This is a big story today, not just here in South Carolina, but around the country. How in the world were they able to reach the conclusion that they should indeed hold it in the community where this family is so well known and well connected? Well, here's the thing. The prosecution or the defense could have moved for a change of venue if they wanted to mm -hmm. under South Carolina law. For some reason, that was not done. Not to question anybody's judgment, but that was not done. Uh, but you can either move for a change of venue, which means you try the case in a totally different county, totally different jurisdiction of similar dem demographics, of course, mm -hmm. or you do a change of venire, meaning you pick the jury from a different uh, jurisdiction and bring them to Collin County. But that was not done. And how are you supposed to pick a jury that has has so much uh, openness to the Murdoch family living there. I mean, they ran, you know, the law there for generations. So how do you find a juror who is n not biased and has never heard of this case before? Well, here's the thing. You're going to find it impossible to find jurors who have not heard of this case. But that's not the question. Mm -hmm. The question is, regardless of what you've heard, regardless of what you know about the case, can you put that aside and only decide the case based upon the law based upon the evidence and the instructions given to you by the judge. That's the question. And we know from our reporters on the ground, our Nick Neville is there, also Greg Adeline. Nick reported just a short time ago that two jurors have already been dismissed because they're like, hey, we know the Murdoch family. Wow. And the judge has given specific instructions to the media not to release any details about their identity. But we know that there are those keyboard warriors out there who are going to try and find out who these people are. I'm sure they will. Mm -hmm. And jury selection in this case, because it's a high profile case, could take a while. I imagine probably two weeks. I have actually tried a triple homicide case in a different state where it took at least a month to pick the jury. Wow. So yeah. you got to do what you got to do to find fair jurors. And the challenge here is to find those who will, number one, keep an open mind, number two, for the defense at least, uh, hold the prosecution to the standard of proof beyond a reasonable doubt, and of course, embrace and accept the presumption of innocence. Mm. Yeah, and when it comes to jury strikes, how many uh, strikes does each side get and how does that work as a matter of the law? Sure, when it comes to jury strikes, yeah. we call them peremptory jury strikes. Mm -hmm. 10 for the defense and five for the prosecution. Now, when it comes to challenges for cause, striking a jury for a truly legitimate reason because they cannot be fair is unlimited, but that's up to the court to decide that. So do, you said you mentioned that you expect, rather, that jury selection could last for a couple of weeks. I would imagine so. Do we know yet whether this jury will be sequestered? And can you talk a little bit to our viewers about what that would mean? That, too, is a discretionary matter. Uh, I don't know if any lawyer would make a motion to sequester the jury. That's a great inconvenience, obviously, for the jurors. Mm -hmm. And the courts normally do not like to sequester the jurors. Mm -hmm. uh, that often happens in capital murder cases. But in general murder cases where there is no uh, effort to see the death penalty, that normally does not happen. And, and again, sequester them for what reason? Right. They've already heard about the case. They've heard mm -hmm. about the case. That's they have true. indeed. And then going back to the fact that this is being held in Colleton County, where the Murdoch, has, uh, Murdoch family has so many ties, uh, will his defense see that as maybe a good thing for them in this case? And that's probably why they didn't want to get it moved out of Colleton County. That's a possible strategy. That's mm -hmm. a possible strategy. Uh, the thing is, uh, we, we hope that a fair jury is picked for both sides, for mm -hmm. the prosecution and defense, because that's the only way that you want to come to justice in this case, that fair people, neutral, impartial, detached people sit and decide the case based upon the law, as I said, the evidence and the charges given by the judge. Oftentimes, jurors might not like what the judge has to say, but you have to be willing to embrace it anyway and apply that law. When we come back, I want to talk with you about evidence. There's some critical evidence that they've been talking a lot about today, that white shirt that had blood on it. Also, new revelations about a Snapchat video mm -hmm. um, that, that supposedly was made within an hour or so of that window. That's been the estimated time of death. Sure. So let's take a quick break. We'll come back and talk with you about what could be the key factors on whether that evidence is allowed in and whether the jury will ever hear about okay. it. We will have much more with attorney Carl B. Grant right after this.
Welcome back. We are continuing our conversation with legal expert and trial lawyer Carl B. Carl B. Grant in relation to the Murdoch murder trial where uh, jury selection has already begun, Judy, and then we're learning new, uh, some new details about what witnesses will be called to the stand during this trial, including a representative from the social media website Snapchat, where we're learning that Paul Murdoch, mm -hmm. uh, the son that was killed, uh, apparently sent a video on Snapchat within the hour of his murder. So interesting to see how yeah. this will all play out when it comes to the trial. Exactly. As we hear about that evidence and new revelations, that's what everyone's sitting on the edge of their seats as this mm -hmm. whole controversy uh, and murder mystery has played out. The question, Carl, is will that e will the jury ever get that evidence? We talk about this Snapchat video, which according to, you know, there was a flurry of legal filings and this Snapchat video came to light saying that we have no idea what's on it. But it certainly sounds compelling, and, and they believe that there's some relationship and that it was done within an hour or so of what has been estimated as the time of death. So do you think that will meet the bar? What are the things that the judge will, will assess to determine whether that will, in fact, be allowed? The, the foundation for all evidence, first and foremost, is is it relevant? Mm. Is it relevant? Relevance means does it have any tendency to prove or disprove the guilt or innocence of the defendant? If, and if it is relevant, then the court considers it. Now the next step is, does it appear to be hearsay? Well, mm -hmm. if it is hearsay, there are many exceptions to the hearsay rule when it comes to that uh, chat video that you're talking about. Rule 803.6 is a key exception. You better be teaching us about the law. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> to the hearsay yeah. rule that applies in this case. Yeah. Okay. That is the business records rule. Mm -hmm. And I imagine if the prosecutor was going to try to get it in, he is going to use it as an exception to the hearsay rule. And what, what, number one, you must show that it was a record that was created as a business record and then you got to call the custodian of the record to, to establish that the record is indeed authentic, mm -hmm. that, it, that it is what it purports to be. So that's why they have asked this Snapchat representative to be there in court to help with that process, I imagine. Mm -hmm. It's logical that, that that would be the reason. Yeah, some other evidence uh, that they're looking at, the white shirt that Murdoch allegedly wore um, on the nights of the killings and the blood spatter. Uh, how does that play into to the defense and the prosecution? Yeah, uh, the, the back spatter is, is, is referred to in what mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. uh, well, naturally, the question is, what was it? Was it really back spatter or was it something else? Mm -hmm. And, the, and the, the defense office is going to challenge all of that, and the prosecution is going to try to get it in. Obviously, if it proves to be back spatter, then that's going to help the prosecution. Then the question is going to come about the testing of the back spatter. Are there any inconsistencies in the witness's testimony as to what it was and what it was not? If you have a consistent case, you have a very powerful case. Mm -hmm. If you have a case that has inconsistencies in the witness's testimony, any trial lawyer with his salt is going to exploit that, exploit that to the best of their ability. Well, and you know, as you look at both sides of this, you know, of course, the prosecution views that shirt as compelling evidence. The defense says, well, of course, there was uh, blood on this shirt because he was checking on his family members. The other issue is uh, they reported on CNN today that that shirt has been destroyed in this process. Mm -hmm. So how problematic will that be? In the testing process that it was destroyed. Mm -hmm. Well, that's going to be problematic. Of course, the defense, we always argued that if you destroyed evidence that we, I'm, I'm a defense trial lawyer, right, of course, right. I'm not a prosecutor, I have to work for the state to be a prosecutor. And we always argued that if there's evidence that's lost, destroyed, or misplaced that we can't find, then that inures to the benefit of defense. If, if you destroyed it, why did you destroy it before I got a chance to test it? Well, is it uh, likely that we will see Alec Murdoch take the stand? Well... It depends upon what the defense counsel wants to do as a strategy. Some lawyers, some trial lawyers are afraid to put their clients on the witness stand in a criminal case, particularly a murder trial. Mm -hmm. I'm not one of those lawyers. I put my client, in fact, I've had a murder trial where I literally called the mother, the father, and the sister as a defense witness. Mm. In my case in chief. Wow. And my client was not convicted of murder. Okay? Yeah. So you got to do what you have to do. But I'll leave that up to defense attorneys as to whether they want to do that or not. But whether it's likely to happen, yeah. I don't know. Well, that <laughs> okay. would be the million dollar One question. One thing I do know, trial. he's in good hands and they'll make the, the right decision as to how to proceed. Yeah. Well, obviously, national media covering this case will have extensive live coverage here on WYS as well. You will be with us throughout the duration of the trial. You mentioned jury selection. Expect it could take up to two weeks. How long could this trial take? I'm estimating, Judy, uh, after the jury selected, maybe two weeks. 
Okay. At most. Mm. That's what I'm estimating. Okay. I wasn't sure if we were going to be in weeks or months. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. I'm estimating maybe two weeks at two weeks after the jury is selected. After the jury I would is selected. Imagine. So that's 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 what I'm thinking because again the trial is essentially on the murder charges. Now other evidence is going to be coming in, but the trial right. is on the murder charges. Uh, the longest jury trial that I've had is two months. That's the same one I was telling you about where it took a month to pick the jury. Right. And that was outside of South Carolina. But it is unusual to have a trial in South Carolina. Uh, that last two months, even capital murder cases. Well, the fact that it's playing out for the national media could extend it a little bit. We'll yeah. see yeah. how that goes. I would just urge our viewers, um, don't listen to the legal experts on Facebook. Listen to the real expert mm -hmm. here on WYS TV. Uh, Carl B. Grant, we appreciate your Thank time you so and much. your expertise. Thank you. All right, we'll see you back soon.